Ahoy hoy, everybody, and welcome to Talking Simpsons, where we all been to 4th Street and D. I am your host for this, Bob Mackey, and who else is here today? Oh, thank you very much. That has not been played in the show since we launched the second yeah. season. And it's an injustice, I say. It really is. So who is talking right now? I am Chris Antis. And who else is here? Henry Gilbert. Hi. And who else? Dave Rudden. And this is the Laser Time Podcast Network's chronological exploration of The Simpsons. And today's episode is Dancing Homer, mm-hmm. which aired on November 8th, 1990. And Chris is going to tell us what happened on this mystical day in history 25 years ago. Oh, my God. Oh, boy, Bobby. This week in Simpsons history, Eve Arden passes away. Daryl Strawberry signs a five-year contract with the Los <laughs> Angeles Dodgers. And the Rocky Horror Picture Show is released for the first time ever on VHS with a low, low price of $89.95. Oh, that's a steal. <laughs> that's one of those, uh, like, uh, rental-only prices, I think. No, no, that's like that... There, when they say Disney Home Video, yeah, that's different from Disney Video Rental, and mm-hmm. videos for rent would cost hundred like yeah, that's up to a hundred dollars. Yeah, it was crazy. And this, so, you got to buy for ninety dollars. Yeah, if, wow. you, if you remember, there was a huge marketing campaign for the Rocky Horror mm-hmm. Picture Show finally coming because it was it was In the that 80s, situation it was impossible to find it. Yeah, you it was watch like, it on your own. It's yeah. not big enough to be on home video like Bambi, and it's not. It, but it also has a following, so maybe if everybody paid 80 bucks for it, we could have it. Don't tell gamers that, they'll shit their pants. It's kind of like Kickstarter, yeah. but yes, uh, yes. with overpriced media that will deteriorate and become useless. Uh, kids, this was back in 1990 when media was worth money. Yeah. So Dave, you boo that Daryl Strawberry yep, went to the Darryl. LA Dodgers because he was, he was a Met in the late 80s. And do you know that because you're a baseball fan, yeah. so you must have really enjoyed this yeah, episode. Yeah, this episode is a very weird confluence of like my love for baseball. Hearing that, that was when I was kind of at an impasse for when I was a Mets fan mm-hmm. because Daryl Strawberry and Doc Gooden were my two favorite Mets, Mets players and, and they both went to different teams and I'm like White should went I f- to the uh, Braves didn't he? N- no he went to the Yankees uh, or somewhere else before that but uh, anyway like, the my, I was like Wildcats yeah I, I had to think like <laughs> should I root for these new teams they're on or should I root for the Mets and I'm like I like the Mets I'm going to root for the Mets and you know, we're watching this. We just watched this episode, and to put a little bit of a timestamp on this episode, it's in the middle of the World Series where the Mets yeah. are playing the Royals right down right now. They're by the, down by the time by you two, hear but... this, the Mets will have lost. Oh no! <laughs> I still believe. <laughs> to this believe. date, the only baseball players I know are for the ones from the set, the next uh, season's episode, Homer at the Bat. So, is yeah. how, what's Steve Sachs up to these days? Well, he's still in prison. Oh, oh, he's what? in prison. <laughs> no, that's huh. from the episode. Oh, oh right, right. Okay. He's, he's and Ken been Griffey trying... Jr. still lost in another dimension. No, Ken Griffey Jr. That had was Ozzy Smith. Ozzy Smith was in the. I had all their baseball cards. Ozzy Smith, (laughs) Daryl Strawberry, Don Mattingly, Steve Sachs, um, Mike Sosha. Mike Sosha. So once again, we do This Week in Simpsons History because it shows you how much America has changed. And back then, baseball was interesting. Oh, yeah. Uh, (laughs) I I did uh, not notice until (laughs) the World Series that Dave is always wearing a Mets hat. I've worn this for an entire month. It just says NY on it, and it's orange. Yeah, well, it's it's usually blue, but because we live in San Francisco, and I kind of want to blend in and not have people call out my not rooting for the Giants. That's why I wear an orange hat. All right. But, in, mm-hmm. but what's, anyway. What's the, what is this episode about, B-A-B? This episode is about Homer. I think it's his first Homer Gets a New Job episode, mm-hmm. really. I, was, I had listed that. This yeah. is the beginning of Homer I Gets guess, a New Job. I mean, he was, he didn't have a job, but when he became the safety evangelist, that mm-hmm. was, it was a new thing he was doing, but it was like, a promotion it, in the same place. At the same place. With the same right. bosses. Yeah. yeah. But, but uh, this is a completely new job. It's, yes. a, it's a sports mascot job, and Homer... Eventually rises to fame as a like non costume mascot, yeah. just a weird drunk guy dancing around, spelling things out with his body. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, like I, I, Dave, I kid you mm-hmm. on the baseball stuff. I did love that the first what third of the episode yeah. is just baseball jokes for sure. And, There's like no plot; it's just like yeah. a bunch of jokes about baseball. Yeah, well, here's the intro. I have an intro here with Homer in it. So Homer, what happened in Capital City? Oh, Barney! Come on, Homer, we're dying of curiosity. Look, there's only one thing worse than being a loser. It's being one of those guys who sits in a bar telling the story of how he became a loser. And I never want that to happen to me. Please, Homer. Yeah, come on, Homer. Well, okay. <laughs> so, but, also, it's a framing device. This is the first flashback episode. Structurally, it's a weird thing. Uh, the, yeah. Dave, you listen... Uh, sorry, Bob, you listen to the commentaries. I'm, I'm guessing on the, this. The whole framing device aspect of this episode was done after the fact. If you watch mm-hmm. the animation, it's clearly from a later episode okay. where yeah. mouths are being recycled, movements are being recycled. It's yeah, not very it's natural. Bad. It's it is bad. really bad. I mean, like, knowing what we know now about animation, it's mm-hmm. easy to point out, like, oh, clearly this is ADR work, or clearly mm-hmm. this is recycled animation. But this was done after the fact, and I think... Um, what was the last episode to be rewritten as a flashback? Um, Wasn't there another one in the first season, maybe? I don't remember. Uh, I mean, there was Telltale Head. Telltale Head, yeah, that yeah, was another one. Right. That you're right. right. Yeah. clever yeah. with it, at least. No, uh, Mike Reed 
Priest mentions it on the commentary that he thinks it was a G- James L. Brooks move. That it, mm-hmm. And it's something they did in old Dick Van Dyke episodes. Mm-hmm. Where like, we don't know if this story is interesting enough, so let's have the character tell it from the point and backwards. It, makes, right. it gives it an amazing bookend. Yeah. And I don't know. Makes, it gives it something it, of a happy ending. And, too. Well, we I talk guess about, when they're just like, oh, Homer got fired. Let's all hug him. When that's the ending, it's like, well, yeah, it's well, not Bob, Bob's yeah. a member of the No Homer Society or whatever. I, I have the tattoo and everything <laughs> and, on a but, secret part but of my that's, body. that's part of what people hate about Modern Simpsons is Homer getting new jobs. Yeah, I mean, it is. I mean, they've made fun of it within the show itself yeah. around season nine or ten. Like, this is a common stock plot for Homer, but this is the first time that he left his job and there even had to be like built in like like yep. narrative buttresses like and, it's okay for him to leave because think, of these reasons I think that's why we find this episode acceptable is because well I have this is from later on in the episode but you can see the Simpsons like coping with the idea of leaving Springfield and it's the only time they do that because I don't think you can do that again mm-hmm. but here let's hear, hear the you only I'd move be twice. lying if I didn't say that this scares me a little that we all have a calling a reason the almighty put us on this earth and yours might be to dance on dugouts you mean let's do it homer yeah let's blow this pop stand and never look back whatever doesn't kill me can only make me stronger it's not that simple i've got to convince my supervisor to give me a leave of absence sure what would you like four years five years (laughs) <laughs> I like that echo on He's that only one. in there just for that one joke. Yeah, it's like, it's like a six-second yeah, joke. It's the only joke. time we've ever seen him. But I, I do like this. They have a prolonged sequence of the Simpsons saying goodbye to Springfield, mm-hmm. which... We're really skipping ahead here, though. Yeah, we, we are. are. This we is are. like second act stuff. It is. So, okay, so back to the beginning. The entire first act is just... Homer is going to accompany baseball night. The plan is 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 paying for this to to pay for nuclear plant employees, spouses, and no more than three children night <laughs> at the nuclear uh, sorry the Springfield uh, Stadium, which is the first appearance of the Isotopes. Yes, mm-hmm. which um, believe it or not, like ten years later, the Albuquerque's minor league team would rename itself to the Isotopes no based shit. on the fan poll wow. because there was an episode maybe wow. season thirteen or fourteen. It's called yep. Hungry Hungry Homer, yep. where he finds out his Springfield's team is moving to Albuquerque. It's a it's a oh, giant wow. like uh, conspiracy, and he he says just a hunger strike because of it and because of that Albuquerque's team actually renamed themselves to the Isotopes based wow. on a fan poll so Albuquerque's made, sorry minor league team is now the Isotopes Stacy Keach named uh, would play the owner of the Isotopes then <laughs> oh, very right. different character than the Antoine Tex dude in this uh, so on the commentary this this episode was written by Ken Levine not mm-hmm. Ken Levine the right. name created Ken Levine and he plays one of the announcers he's the announcer you hear a lot, because a lot of him. he was a minor league announcer <laughs> For the uh, Syracuse Chiefs, and actually Antoine Tex is named after the owner of the Syracuse. I, right. lo- I love minor league baseball teams because it seems like everybody just chopped like mm-hmm. city and team name in half and put them in a hat. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's what I. I don't know if it's you the guys Detroit have Mets. ever. I don't know if you guys have ever been to a minor league baseball game. They're fun. Yeah, they're fun I because they got to work they, harder for your attention. They do. It's very much represented in this episode. A lot yeah, of the tropes of it, like. Cheap, cheap beer. I, dude, two fifty. Oh. They paid two fifty. My two seventy-two ounce. What tubs am I joking? Those beer. beer tubs. They're like KFC chicken buckets filled yeah. with beer. And here's Marge's warning to Homer. I hope you'll space out the tubs this year, Homer. What are you getting at? Well, last year you got a little rambunctious and mooned the poor umpire. Marge, this ticket doesn't just give me a seat. It also gives me the right, no, the duty to make a complete ass of myself. <laughs> <laughs> There's a great scene that opens this episode where uh, it's cut for syndication, I know, because it's like, I watched it again, like, wow, what is this scene? It's hmm. auto driving everyone yes. to the game, that outrunning was... the cops. Like, yeah. it's the first thing you see. is like, whoa. Yeah. Hey, we made it. We're here. All yeah. right. That, I loved that joke as a kid. I, like, but, yeah. I didn't realize why Otto would be driving adults to a yeah. destination, but... I guess he does that at he's night. Got, he's got one job, Bob. Up until Otto's episode, episodes were very Otto-heavy, but I think mm-hmm. they, they gave away all of Otto's jokes in that one episode about him. The Otto show. Yeah, yeah, I think they sure. talk about it in the commentary. They're yeah. like, we loved Otto, and now we hate him after doing this episode. That episode killed but him. It didn't work with uh, Burns. This is the second straight episode where the Simpsons are having a lot of interaction with Mr. Burns. So, yes, but we talked about that, right? Yeah. The Burns, the two cars in every yeah. garage and three eyes yeah. on every fish. Yeah. It, that it, was done before. Because I, originally I thought this was the joke that established Burns never recognizing Homer. Ah, ah well, if it isn't the simps. Uh, it, it, uh, Simpson, sir. Huh? Uh, oh, uh, oh, yes. Uh, Homer and Marge Simpson. Oh, and these must be Bart, Lisa, and uh, expecting. Uh, the card needs to be updated, sir. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a mystery science yeah. reaction to me. So, it's, it's kind of a callback to Notice Grace Like Home, where yes. he's reading index cards and talking yes. to people as as they walk into this event that he's holding. But yeah. as a nerd, I'm going to mention this constantly as we keep recording, is that I started... 
taping every episode of The Simpsons and watching them every day oh. at two cars in every garage and three hours in every fish. And so, like, this was right after the biggest Burns episode ever. Like, mm-hmm. how could you... And who swore to get Homer. Right. And immediately doesn't <laughs> immediately recognize him. Immediately That is true, yeah. And I thought that was really funny as a kid. I immediately caught on to the idea that, like... It, and I think they acknowledge something like that later in the season that Burns will never recognize Homer. I feel like it is a retcon because, like, in order to keep these yeah. Burns stories going, we have to acknowledge that Burns cannot recognize yeah. Homer. Yeah. Yeah, in any way. The owner of the company can't shouldn't, in reality, mm-hmm. hang out with... Spend so much time around one family. And that's also the plot... I mean that they make fun of it so well in the Who Shot Mr. Burns two parter. Yeah, all oh, right. Burns just lists when he sees a photo of the family in the Simpsons, like, oh yeah, that's Marge. I tried to marry her mom, and uh, that's <laughs> that's uh, the baby who <laughs> took my who had my bear Bobo. Remember, and he's just listing. <laughs> There's my former there. guard dog. <laughs> <laughs> right, the, even the dog, right? Yeah, <laughs> even the dog. Uh, but, okay, the minor league stuff. I wanted to say, mm-hmm. I definitely. I didn't go to a minor league game until after I saw this mm-hmm. because my when I lived I lived in Atlanta and I actually did get to go to a couple Braves games their major league but I've been to one but a minor league game I was always thinking about like oh yeah washed up major leaguers like yep. just the idea of like, yeah. these loser or Bart these, mentions that well yeah. I, I have that again these were episodes every line is very important to me <laughs> so I had as my tentative line of the show because I love I loved it so much again we can have, we can debate That's this the joke. Um, I love this line so very much. You know, boy, some of the players you see tonight may make it to the big leagues one day. What? Aren't we going to see any washed up major leaguers? Sure, we get a nice mix here. <laughs> yeah, that is true. That's great. And, and also, also clearly Nancy Cartwright doing two reads kind of incorrectly. Yeah. Aren't we going to wash up majors? I feel like they chose the wrong uh, the wrong reads I, for this. I don't know. I don't mean to harp on that kind of stuff. No, it's been hey, 25 years. I mess up audio begun. on a daily basis. <laughs> Also, I thought when so when Burns sits next to Homer, Homer's mm-hmm. talking very loudly about not wanting to sit next to Burns. I'm like, Burns yeah. is right there, Homer. Mm-hmm. And also that I also wrote that wouldn't a seventy two ounce beer kill Burns? <laughs> it should. It should. I remember the there was like a later season eight episode where there was a similar baseball night for the people mm-hmm. and Lenny gets drunk and he's like, His beer smelled of beer and pretzeled okay. bread. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like he was clearly <laughs> terrified of uh so, yeah. the uh, prospect that, of Burns alcohol. doesn't have seventy two ounces of beer. He has it probably one hundred and forty four ounces of beer because he gets a he gets a second yeah, drink with homer right. and i wow. love the, I, I love this clip of him getting drunk and jeering with homer that is great it's the one time they actually connect the hitters off his rocker kissing betty crocker <laughs> <laughs> good one sir oh well i used to rile the late great connie mack with that one at old shibe park little baby batter can't control his bladder mm, crude but uh, i like it okay uh, what do you giggle. say we freshen up our little drinky poos don't mind if I do. Uh, <laughs> did anybody else look up Connie Mack? I no, know he's a real baseball I, player. I know Burns has ties to the Ken Burns baseball yeah, era of yeah. baseball. Yes. Like, uh, Ken, I know Shilas Joe Jackson, he talked about him too. Connie Mack is, to this day, the longest serving manager of a baseball team. He's a player, partial owner. Wow. Uh, he played his last game in 1896. <laughs> Yikes. So I did not get that at the time, but this is another thing establishing Burns as a vampire. <laughs> yeah. There's now, a lot of old-timey Burns baseball stuff in uh, Homer at the Bat he, again next season. He jeered a guy almost 100 years ago from when this came out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> he also talks about uh, Satchel Paige, who was one of the first black major leaguers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, I'm surprised he remembered he was dead. I feel yeah. like two years later, Burns would just remember. He was like, get Satchel Page, He's still alive. It, actually, yeah, that's the exact joke from the softball episode, which is just like Burns tries to ca- get this team and Smithers has to point out they're all dead. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, and so, you know, Homer gets hammered and sees that the team needs to support and jumps out and watches. Just starts dancing. Mm-hmm. This does seem like an old timey thingamajig. It does. I don't know but, anyone who would be entertained by this at this point in time. It does but, suck. I'm a, I'm a yeah. capital city audience member, but we'll get to that <laughs> later. Well, oh, I did also love uh, uh, such a great observation. Mm-hmm. I don't think Bleeding Gums Murphy is a great singer, and no. nor would be hired <laughs> no. for that. But it was a very good observational joke of the person who over sings the national anthem because yes. they're like, I can't just plain old sing the national anthem it's, it's, I have to do it a, a, yeah. I have to put my stamp on this it's, yeah the only reason I ever watched a second episode of the Osbournes because I just saw it once <laughs> and Kelly Osborne made fun of Mariah Carey's Christmas album with jingle <laughs> like in like I as a kid I noticed that the, the second viewing that you can see the clock and the clock says the national anthem took 26 minutes. Yeah, so, uh, it's a very Whitney Houston-style performance, yes. I think. Brave! 
attractive. <laughs> but the, the, the voice didn't match. It did no, not it's match not, it's not Ron Taylor. I, I like I how actually, Lisa is very attentive during the entire yeah. thing. Like, she appreciates yes, this. Yes, at Lisa cares. But everyone else is falling asleep. Yeah, that's, that, that's some nice continuity well, in the Speaking show. of mix-ups, right. I, have to, I have to mention, as a, as a baseball fan, the announcers say... We look to snap the longest losing streak in pro baseball, but multiple times in this episode it's mentioned that the Isotopes are a minor league team mm. and that Homer is graduating to the That's capital not city. Mm. No, it's not professional baseball. It's minor league baseball. That's a real goof. But they're Triple A's A's that makes you a professional. I, I don't know. Like if someone had the most home runs in a <laughs> in a minor league season, no one would say he has the professional baseball record. They say he has the minor league record. That's true. If yeah. someone, yeah, like Barry Bonds has the professional baseball record. Also, on a on a nerdy continuity level, when you're on the jumbotron, they you're not mic'd. Like they can't, people can't <laughs> yeah. hear you. It's it's silent. Thanks, yeah. everybody. Uh, At least that wasn't kiss cam. Uh, uh, but Homer does his dance and Homer thing, and this is one of my the first appearance ever of one of my favorite characters on The Simpsons, the unnamed rich Texan. But I can't take all the credit. The batter did his part too. <laughs> Excuse me, you sir, a dancing fella. I'm Antoine Tex O'Hara. I own the Isotopes. <laughs> Would you be interested in becoming our official mascot? Me? Uh, a mascot for a Bush League team? <laughs> I should have slept on it. Or at least stared blankly for a while. Perhaps if I'd been unable to think of a nickname, all our lives might have been spared. Get on the bus, dancing Homer! Will you shut up? I'm trying to think of a name! <laughs> Yeah, the, the later Texas businessman would not be fire. I mean, he would he would be firing guns and like yes. saying, "Ooh, like passing whatever. ivory checks." Yeah. <laughs> uh, and he, here's another thing I never noticed: while dancing, Homer is working for the Isotopes. I never noticed this. Forgive me if you did. That Homer misspells Springfield. Oh, yes. uh, more than once yes. in this episode. Yeah. I never noticed that I because yeah. that. and you can you can see, well you can barely make it out even in the clip. P R. I, I only noticed that because I just love this line. Why not in Miss Strike Three? Topes lose. Topes lose. Topes lose. I'm so glad they had Ken Levine. Yeah, the creator of Bioshock. Dude, he sounds. <laughs> Uh, he sounds so accurate. Like mm-hmm. I, it's because it is his job, but it is yeah. That's a baseball announcer. Yeah, that's yeah. who you hear in the thing. So I only only noticed that misspelling mm-hmm. when I had the captions on on the DVD. Yeah, I never noticed it before. It, it's hard to tell with Homer's they start zooming even faster yeah. at that point. Yeah, like later in the hotel room when they're in Capital City. Spoilers, he but Capital. he does it again. Yeah. Like he misspells Capital City too. Oh, uh, because Homer. Uh, even though the Topes lose at that very evening, um, he learns that he's being invited to Capital City, the big leagues. You wanted to see me, Tex? Homer, now we both knew when you began doing this, you weren't going to be here forever. Oh, 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 I get it. You can't fire the players, so you fire the mascot. You make me sick. Homer, I'm not firing you. (laughs) I just got the word. You've been called up to Capital City. Me? And the majors? That's right. Wait a minute. Capital City has a mascot. The greatest mascot there is, the Capital City Goofball. Yeah, but he's getting on in years, and he needs someone to fill in for a couple innings a night. Could be a big opportunity for you. I'll say. Why don't you talk it over with your family? Because they might say no. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Cute, cute, cute. So, oh, also, there's the thing worth noting in here that they mentioned on the commentary. This was the first episode directed by Mark Kirkland, who... That's right, yeah. I believe still has the record of most episodes directed. Like, really? he never left, and he's... He's still I, on the show, yeah. He's still doing it today. Really? And like, the 27 season one. run? Yeah, and that oh, this was his first, and they mentioned, too, on the commentary... I, I gotta say, on the commentary, Graining is being a real, like, Pris about everything. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I don't like those lines above their eyebrows. We got rid of that. Yeah, like, you told us to do that, the yeah. eyeball. She's like, I would have taken it back. Yeah. yeah. I don't like the curved uh, things over Homer's ears. They should be pointy. Wes Archer started doing curves, like... Uh, this is the kind of you you've talked about it a million times bob but yeah that's the kind of like things that were artistic stamps that got just like st- gotten rid of eventually erased by by Graney. to make everything more uninteresting and uniform yeah. pretty much yeah <laughs> but by the way i love the design of dancing homer and i had to yeah. buy him i have da- <laughs> dancing is. homer's right there in the room oh wow i forgot Here, about you that. can listen to him right now i'm holding <laughs> my hand sitting in a cracker box which is in a novelty rum jar what the hell is wrong yeah, with my apartment on? there's like he's like a matryoshka doll I, i'll <laughs> take him home i should yeah. have left him here but i thought he'd be a funny prop if we used him like three times and we <laughs> did and i used he served his 
purpose. So the Simpsons go to Capital City, which uh, I'm only getting now is like a very, very like super high level joke about like yes. a famous place that is also very nondescript. Yeah. Because they're naming like these landmarks that don't really exist. Fourth Street and D. Yeah. And like different restaurants yeah. and like it's bridges. Kind, yeah, yeah. It's kind of a like melange of like Manhattan mm. and Chicago and L.A. Yeah. To keep it. Even then they're like, we don't want to say what state the Simpsons are but in. But hands up, be honest. Who thought this is an actual city? My mom, kid. my parents explained to me immediately when the I, show I, was on. I, I was like, oh, Capital City, what's that? They're like, it's a joke. It's the Capital City. I know. It's, I it's, probably it's, did, but I don't remember. I definitely yeah. did. Like, I thought it was a real place that you could visit. But then I'm looking at it now, and, like, the animation is so rough. It's like, they, it looks like they're going to the worst area of town, and they travel <laughs> They travel to the city at, like, midnight. <laughs> I think it is also a joke about the Simpsons' low expectations yeah. and low low standards, where it's like, oh, this this one corner is really important, but <laughs> just, nothing is happening on I, it. I first went to New York. I get in the cab, and we finally arrive in the city, and I am like gawking out the window at the size of the buildings. I've never seen this before. Mm. Uh, I was exactly like that, and yeah. I've always I've been in love with New York ever You've since. Capered like a stupid clown yes. when you look <laughs> at those things. Yeah. This is Tony Bennett, correct? Mm-hmm. Yes. yes, and he's, I mean, he's March there. I identifies it. Good yeah. to see you. Like, good to see you. Yeah, that was a song. The Capital City. Song Song was written by Jeff Martin, who wrote every good song in the first eight seasons. And he, was this like the first real explicit song in the show? I mean, original song, original about, song. I think the Bleeding so, Murphy song was original. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, I, weird. Yeah, Le- the Lisa's the Moaning yeah. Lisa. Yeah, the yeah. Moaning Lisa one. That is an original the song. The Moaning Lisa. Count. I sound but, seventy. I feel like it's the first one that broke reality, though, because it's like, like, t- uh, sorry, Tony Bennett's going to be here. Yes, and you can yeah. say hi to him during I the mean, song, singing about the city, but you can counter him in the street. That's yeah, the kind of that's the kind of crap we make i've made fun of of recent of the last decade or so of the simpsons to say like lady gaga how'd you get here <laughs> that's the same type of joke it is but it was a little more risque back then where it's like <laughs> we're gonna break reality but i think it's the first like non-diegetic song where like we're not yeah. sitting here listening to a song that someone is singing mm-hmm. we're in the song yeah and we're like part of this this kind of musical event that's happening yeah that's another thing they complain about in the commentary is that they're like that doesn't even look like tony bennett that looks like victim <laughs> he, he does a smile at the end that i find so charming that no other character ever does he's right. on the screen for like five seconds five too seconds. yeah uh, and I watched still uh, alive once yeah. again Tony in, Bennett who was playing an old person almost 30 years he, ago is he like 80 now yeah he's in his 80s. He, was, 80s he was elderly in this episode he looks really old well, you can like, talk to him years ago. like he was in an interview on the on Colbert years ago a few years ago saying like oh yeah I was I was in the I supported the civil rights movement <laughs> in the 60s like wow like, my yeah. grandfather just died so I can assure you with 100% accuracy Tony Al- Tony Bennett put an album out last year <laughs> it, like it, he loves yeah. Tony Bennett well, he was just on Thirty Rock in the same in the yeah. last season of Thirty Rock. He was in it in pretty much the same capacity. He is in yeah. this episode. Yeah. See the first uh, Simpsons guest star to give a bad vocal performance. Like his song is good, yeah. but good to see you. Good to see you. It's like what the weird inflection. Like, it's probably the best reading they can get from him. Well, I think good to see you. I think like the normal way you say good to see you, not good to see you. <laughs> I think and I, I I do I don't know I love the heart of this episode I love Homer going and taking on a bigger task role that he thinks he's not capable of I love this is again stupid fucking runner up for line of the show but you know again, it's a vote that's the joke don't forget to cheer for me I'll see you after the game when you're a big star Bart was strangely quiet later he explained he was confused by feelings of respect for me <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the Homer eventually meets the Capital City Goofball which is like for some Played reason played by un- Tom Poston Tom Poston do you, you have, have, you have your Newhart. musical sting for this uh, Chris oh no oh, yeah. we haven't had to use this in so long because well, Tony Bennett is still with dead. us <laughs> death stalks you at every turn ah, there it is death <laughs> so we haven't two- used yeah. that in a while but that is our death jingle for the, a dead cast member or or a dead character. Yeah, first right. post first Patreon uh, death jingle. I think yeah. so, but he died in 2007, and I th- the joke behind this is Tom Poston is a very dry, mm-hmm. very like mundane kind of character actor, yes. but he's playing this guy in an insane costume. Yeah. So the Emmy he only has Newhart? one sign. Newhart, yeah. yeah. He only has one scene in this entire episode where he's just talking to Homer about like yeah. the, the mascot life, I guess. Yes, and it, it's my, it's, it is also one of my favorite lines because, of course, I didn't get it as a kid, and I love it now. The fifth inning will be yours. 
Everyone has settled in, had a couple of beers, the game is official. It's a pretty important inning. Hmm. Wow, the fifth. It's also the inning I wish I had a zipper on the front of this thing, if you know what I mean. <laughs> right, Mr. Goofball. Hey, call me plain old goof. So, what exactly do you have planned for us? Well, I get up, I dance, I spell out the name of the city, all to the tune of Baby Elephant Walk. Ah, Mancini, the mascot's best friend. <laughs> Love that line. That's my that line. Yeah, right. that's, that's, I think it's great just because it's also like, it, it is important to do, but I love characters overthinking a very simple job. Yeah. The my, fifth inning, that's when the game's official. What? I what? also liked, <laughs> I liked, real. The, I liked the uh, little continuity thing they did there that there's a photo in the in the locker room of mm-hmm. Homer with Princess Cashmere. Like it oh, had spread to the that. capital wow. city okay. and wow. somebody put it up it in the locker room. Another El incident? My line of the show is something that was only funny in 1990. It's uh, Marge saying a Simpson on a t-shirt. I never thought yeah. I'd see the day. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. I wish I could say I had that. Problem, that was... But I do! Oh! oh that music. The woman who plays it is great. Simpson great. on a t-shirt. I never thought I'd see the day. We'll this see a and couple the, of inside um, jokes like that. Yeah, like I think the underachiever I'm proud of it from uh, Bart mm. uh, Bart gets an F. I think and the, Bart cool. versus Thanksgiving. There's something that is acknowledging the fame uh, right. of the Simpsons I think that's on the, the show. I think that's the most direct they've been about a joke. Of, like, date, we're so yeah. pop. We're so popular. We're on a T-shirt. I'll hold up Bart versus oh, until meanwhile. Now, until this point, episode, meanwhile, yeah. Laser Time has a T-shirt. We, we, we <laughs> might not actually. I mean, we did. We did. Obviously, I think the what the monkeys Paul episode is their most obvious joke about how how overexposed they became yeah but. this is really getting out of hand, <laughs> out of hand. So, so this episode ends i think well how, like homer's reception as dance and homer in capital city uh, right so it doesn't it, play to the big leagues just I guess. to set up my clip i was graceful i was witty brother i was something but they didn't care <sighs> it was so quiet you could hear each individual smart ass remark <laughs> this guy doesn't make me want to cheer. Gee, I really pity him, making a fool of himself in front of so many people. These cornball antics may play in the sticks, but this is Capital City. The only applause I got was for dragging my carcass out of there. Love, I love, I love that, and I, that's yeah. one of my favorite vocal inflections of anything. This is Capital City. Like an <laughs> aristocrat. Yeah, well, the good. guy who says that is a guy in a t-shirt with like a yeah. single tooth. Yeah. Like, they make fun of that on the commentary. Well, I think, say, like, well, he's the arch I think it yeah. makes sense because like... This isn't being filmed. This is Homer's story. Right. That is what he's hearing people mm. say. He doesn't really know. Who. Uh, I see. I feel like there could have been more. To, I like. I find this set this conclusion unsatisfying a mm-hmm. bit because it's like he didn't. Homer didn't do anything wrong. No. Like he just was not prepared for this level of entertainment, and no yes. one else told him like yeah. you have to step it up. You got to put on a costume. You got to do this. You got to do that. <laughs> but he he just had it, one chance. It's and, the goofball's fault for like telling him like yeah that'll work. Yeah. I feel well, like the, goof, didn't see I the feel like the goofball undercut him and was setting him up to fail. That's that could be. I, mean. yeah. I think the goofball the dark probably goofball did his thing long enough that he was accepted as classic. In an institution, but it was just as lame when it premiered. Because mm-hmm. you're, by the way, you're a mascot. The best you can do is be lame, <laughs> pretty much. Well, yeah. what about the famous San Diego Chicken? <laughs> oh, that guy. Don't know him. You've never. I only uh, care about the Toronto Raptors yeah. and the inflatable outfit that falls down on the courts in YouTube. Videos. There, there, there <laughs> probably is uh, instances of secondary mascots, but none are coming to mind. But the, mm-hmm. what they do have a lot of baseball stadiums is they'll have the mascot, like in the case of the Mets, mm-hmm. Mr. Met. But then he can't come out every inning. So yeah. sometimes they'll just, uh, it's the t-shirt crew. They're going to shoot t-shirts at you. We mm. did. Which, we, uh, that happens in a later kill Mod Flanders, that, yeah. right? We yeah. did the college Florida State baseball games. There was just one drunk dude who sort of did uh, have the ability to capture attention within within yeah. the stands of the stadium. Yeah, well, yeah. And that, had a name that. that I forget. Like, the Mets actually, had, they had, the Mets have a guy named Cowbell Man who just walks through this one, like, the middle section, like, from <laughs> one end all the way to the other, Christ. and, like, slams a cowbell. <laughs> But Jeez. people love them. I remember at Braves games, they did have, at least when I was a kid, they had more than one mascot. The puckering I moron. I mean, it's a one, show I'm, sure one was, here. I'm sure one was some level of racist against a uh, Native American. <laughs> Chief score them up. And then the other was, <laughs> and then probably the other was some sort of puppet character, I mm. think, or Muppety person. Oh, another bit I did love was that Homer is told to go to the office and he just doesn't put on clothes. He just did his <laughs> yeah. athletic supporter God only. Sakes, put some clothes on. <laughs> that was so risque, too, of having Homer. Like butt. His butt. I mean, is it's that not, his first bare butt? It's not sexually arousing to most people, I would think. But still, yeah, I think it was his first bare butt. Yeah, it might have been. Yeah. So the episode ends with like another unsatisfying bit of ADR. Mm-hmm. I, I just like... 
I don't know what this episode was supposed to be before this this kind of editing process happened, yeah. where it's Homer in the bar again talking about how, like, the fact that his family forgave him didn't really make him feel better, but the mm-hmm. fact that he can tell a story to his yes. drunk friends is what makes him feel better. Yes. But, but I want to know what the episode was like before this process happened. I yeah, I like, guess it just ended with the Marge telling the kids, hey, don't Homer feels well, bad now. Let's all hug him. You, you know did what, it, Dad. You know what my theory is? Is that it was supposed to end the way that, like, five other episodes in this Probably. and last season, which is Homer in bed with Marge. Yep. Oh, I feel that's right. Yeah. It's like, and it's okay. Like, I love you, Homer. And it's like yeah. you can't, you can't do. You got to stop doing that. It's starting to like really Dude, get repetitive. A, I think we're using the same animation every time. That's an excellent point. I, and I, I'm like, well, maybe one time it can be the the bar giving him the. And, and it makes sense from a sports I, perspective. I, I well, here I have the clip. I lo- I do love the ending. Okay. Wasaga. Hey, you guys are hanging out my every word. I become the center of attention. Yeah, it's riveting. Tell it again, Homer. Okay. I wonder why stories of degradation and humiliation make you more popular. I don't know. They just do. <laughs> By the way, Richard I, Sakai is in there for no reason. Yeah, he is. He shows up in the background with like yeah. a giant mustache. <laughs> I like it because, one, he's, he went from being a failed center of attention to being the center of attention again. It does fit like and, thematically. Uh, yeah. Like He finds success through failure. And, yeah. and also, as somebody, like all I do is record podcasts, latertypepodcast.com, mm-hmm. but like I am in a constant search for anecdotes and stories, and Homer, in my opinion, got the best thing out yeah. of this he could have gotten, which is a story. That's like, true, yeah. Every, well, every nowadays time, he would have a podcast about he that would, He would, <laughs> he I, would. He would about it. I have it. to make it a point to go do different things all the time <laughs> so I have different things to say Any on, material? on podcasts. Yeah. Yes. I, think, I think Homer was, though, a bit reckless. Like, he should have gone... They sold their house. They sold all their stuff. Like, yeah. the, then they just leave town when he should have just gone, like, this is a one-night tryout, mm-hmm. and if it succeeds, we'll hire you. Instead, they're like, yeah, move... To Capital City one night up, you know, so get, go back. They didn't sell their stuff because they yeah, stayed like, in the hotel. Petty and Selma, they get the handoff at the, when they leave, right? Wow. They were having a garage. They were having a yard sale. Oh, that's they true, were, yeah. for sure. And uh, I did like the bit with uh, Lisa saying to all her friends that they're not friends. That yeah. yep. was my again that's my line triple runner up line of the show. That's the joke. I can't help but feel that if we had gotten to know each other better, my leaving would actually have meant something. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) That they all agree with her, and yes, that is, if I ever left my hometown before 25, that is the goodbye I would have had to give. I feel like the show acknowledges Lisa has no friends. Yeah. It's it's been an entire season, and we've not seen her with anyone but, like, Janie a few (laughs) times, so it's it's about right. Oh, Jesus. And Gore Vidal is still a few seasons away, so. Yeah. We got a bunch of lines of the show, and I'm proud of yeah. this one. Yeah, so this was uh, this was Dancing Homer, everybody, mm-hmm. and uh, Dancing, Dancing. Sorry, yeah. I didn't hear an apostrophe in this. <laughs> I'll correct myself next time. So Dancing Dancin. Homer, and thanks for joining us. I am Bob Servo on Twitter. Also, listen to my wow, podcast. Bob Ooh, thank you. Mackie. It's really inexcusable for me not to play that. I know every it's, it's about damn show. time. <laughs> and I also host Retronauts, which is the classic gaming podcast that you should listen to because Ooh. it's great. Oh, lovely. Sure Recently, is. you guys celebrated the uh, launch of the NES, I believe. We did the 30th anniversary yeah. actually. So that just happened. So please mm-hmm. listen to any episode you want. I'm sure you can find a good place to jump in at. Who else? And, uh, and wants- that's on Patreon, just like Laser Time. Yeah. Right? Yeah. This show was brought to you by. I don't mean this as a sponsor, but it's brought to you by Patreon.com slash Laser Time. We put this as a crowdfunding initiative for people to launch, and they did. And if you haven't paid for it, the reason you're hearing it is because other people did. And the first season is available exclusively there because they made it happen. 13 episodes are waiting for you at Patreon.com slash Laser Time, and including other shows, uh, commentaries, mm-hmm. weekly movie commentaries, fun stuff. But you can go to LaserTimePodcast.com for free and check out the show, Laser Time. Uh, we we just finally got done with a bunch of Halloween episodes. I don't know what's in store for us soon. Probably shame songs, mm-hmm. uh, but we definitely could use your help right now because we're trying to bring a buddy of ours on board, Brett Elston. Uh, wow, that's open. That is our that's new. Right. I don't know where the tier is at at this uh, recording, but we that's that's our next goal is to All bring funded. a buddy. Brett. I yeah. want Brett on the on the laser time <laughs> ship or whatever. Going to bring call it. new shit in tow. Yes. So thanks for joining us, everybody. We'll see you next week with a brand new episode, Talking Simpsons. Until then, we'll see you later. Once you get a whiff of it, you'll never want to roam. From Capital City, my home sweet, swinging home.